Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome this morning to Orange Baptist Church. We are just thrilled that that you all are here, and that uh, a lot of you all are here with them. So we're just uh, we're we're thrilled to be together in worship today. Um, and to have this beautiful music that we're about to hear, and we're all in for a treat. We've, the Anabaptist Community Choir was here uh, six years ago in 2018, and um, it's, been, it's been too long. I'm glad you're back. So thanks for coming again. Um, so, so this will, do, will take, take up uh, a lot of our worship today. will be choral and musical, and um, that, is, that is just fine with me. Um, and we're... we're uh, a couple of announcements that I'd like to, to um, get on your radar, especially folks from church. Um, Mar Martha, again, is, is uh, stepping away, retiring but not retiring. She doesn't like to use that, that R word, but uh, she's, she's stepping away. And so we're having a, a reception on May 5th uh, after worship. So please come and be a part of that and, um, and help us to, to send, send, send her off and then back again real soon in a wonderful way. Um, and there's some other announcements in the bulletin. You can see those. But uh, we have a business meeting coming up. It's uh, on, on April 21st. An important business meeting. It requires 49 people to be there to be able to vote on that. So please come be a part of that. And uh, as we're giving all the time to the choir today, I'm not, not doing a pastoral prayer, but there are some, some concerns that I'd like to make sure we're all aware of. Larry Lloyd, um, one of our deacons and church members, is just found out on Friday that he's going to have to have uh, open heart surgery on Tuesday. So please, please keep Larry in your prayers uh, today and Tuesday. And, and also, um, some of you may have seen a, the Bryce family up in Fairfax had a, had a, a fire, and, and two, two of their little ones are in critical condition right now. Um, some of our members are firefighters that... Um, their company responded up, up to that fire. So please, please keep the Bryce family in your prayers as their young ones are fighting for their lives. Um, and um, and as, as we go through the worship service, you, you can be in prayer for them, and, and especially in the coming days and weeks. Uh, please keep them on your hearts in prayers. But, um, but uh, if, you're, if you're a guest with us, if you're with us online, we're glad that you're here. If you're here for the first time, I think some of you are here for the first time, um, or maybe the second time, welcome back. And uh, if, you, if you would like to leave us some information so we can contact you and, and get in touch with you later this week and give you a warm welcome, there are cards on all the pew racks. And if you just put, that, put your information down on that and um, put it in the offering plate as it comes by later on during the service. Um, but welcome to worship. Um, we are again in for a treat of, of choral worship today. So thank you, uh, Jeff and the Anabaptist community. Let us worship together.
unification. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift our brother Larry in prayer. We pray that he feels our, our love, our compassion as he faces a challenging week. Father, we just pray for the surgeon, for his comfort and recovery. Father, we lift the Bryce family as they struggle the challenges with their children. Lord, we enter into worship today seeking to glorify you through our word and through song. Lord, you are a most loving and faithful father, and we thank you and praise you for your goodness. We praise you for your son, Jesus Christ, and we praise you for the free gift of salvation. Lord, I pray that our hearts receive the spirit today and that we take that message of salvation out of this building, into the community, and into the world. Lord, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen.
All right, is that on? It is. So my name is Jeff Swanson, and we are the Anabaptist Community Choir, and I'd just like to talk to you about the songs that we're singing today. And um, I don't usually talk as much on Sunday mornings as I do when we have evening programs. It just seems more reverent that way. Um, as far as who we are, we are a choir made up of Anabaptist people, Amish and Mennonites, and um, we don't have any Hutterites or River Brethren with us at this point. And we come across state lines. A lot of people from the South are a part of this. I am from Pennsylvania. I was born in North Carolina, so I am Southern. But um, I live in Pennsylvania now, and we love to sing. We love God and God's church, and it's such a pleasure to get to sing together. It just thrills our souls, and I, I feel like there's healing in this. So. Um, in short, the music that we're going to sing for you has a water-based theme as opposed to like an oil-based theme. <laughs> and so um, the songs, honestly, they deal with water. So I, I see two the themes in a water-based theme. The first um, would be the river, the physical and spiritual river that starts in the Garden of Eden. And then Ezekiel talks about it, that life-giving river. And then we see it again in the New Testament with Christ. And we're going to sing about that, um, rivers of flowing waters out of us from God. And then ending in Revelation with that life-giving river again. And another thing that I think as Christians we think about when we talk about water are storms or peaceful waters. And I think the theme there really is peace. It's so nice when um, the waters are calm and you wake up and your slippers are right where you thought they were in the dark, and um, your day is perfect. Those are lovely days, and um, I, we wish we could always have those. It's awesome when everything goes wrong, and um, it's just a bad day, and um, you have peace with God and peace with Christ, and that's hard. Um, I'm not there every day for sure, but I think that's, uh, that's goal, and I think Christ has it for us. We just need to, to reach out and see that peace. And I know it's hard when um, life is hard and people are hurting. And so uh, I hope that you can see both of those themes. Thank you so much for having us. So we're gonna sing for a while for y'all and then um, we'll sing a few songs after that. And um, it's my goal to have beautiful choral music. And you know what, Anabaptists, Mennonites, we just like Southern gospel. So we're gonna sing some Southern gospel for y'all and some other songs. So I hope that you'll enjoy it.
this on? Sorry, I left it on the first time. Did that mess up the choir? You got it, okay. So um, I am not um, originally from the Anabaptist and I, and we were Baptist church for a big part of our life. One of the things that I remember about that, that long ago, was when my, my wife and I were in children's ministry. We lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we went to Berean Baptist Church. And we had a city ministry, and I love group, um, group publishing's BBS, and so some things stick with you. And so we're going to sing a song that is right from group BBS. It's the one where they're on the boat, and um, it's God is Good. So I thought that song has to be arranged for a cappella voices. So I think some of you will recognize this one. I'm turning this thingy off. Again.
It says, After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? Where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, worship Him day and night within His temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. I love this beautiful vision from John in the book of Revelation. It's, a, it's an image of folks gathered together in a worship service. When all believers have come into the presence of the Lamb who is at the throne, and there are a number of things that are important about this crowd of worshipers. First of all, it's the fact that it's huge. It's a huge crowd of worshipers who have gathered and it's more than anybody can count and there are all kinds of people from all kinds of nations and people groups from all corners of the globe. Languages, different tribes and tongues. People from all over the place and it's an important thing to note because in our day and age when in our culture and even in our religious culture people can get a little bit tribal are you this kind of Christian? Are you that kind of Christian? Do you believe these things or not? Do you have the right kinds of beliefs? And hear me say, our beliefs are very important. But I'd like to think that we have risen above some tribalism that this passage, another passage, shows us that God is not limited to just the people like us. Amen? worship service in the book of Revelation in the throne room is full of people who are all different. They're all singing together as one, holding palm branches, giving praise to God, singing to God and to the Lamb. That even though they come from all different walks of life and different corners of the globe, they have that one purpose that unites them together. When my wife Mary Beth and I were married, we brought a lot of different backgrounds to the marriages, to the marriage as most diff marriages do. We come from different families, we have different friends, we were both raised in the church. So we had multiple church families coming together to worship, coming together to our wedding. In fact, our fathers are both ministers, so we had church families from Orange Baptist Church, from Second Baptist Church Lancaster, Second Baptist Church Richmond, Covenant Baptist Church in Lancaster. We had all kinds of people from all over the place. When we got married 14 years ago, those people came from all over, from Virginia, from North Carolina, from Kentucky, from Pennsylvania, from Georgia. We had we had Catholic friends. We had Presbyterian friends. We had all kinds of people gathered together in this place, in this sanctuary. Now, I'm not sure we had any Anabaptists. I'm sorry. I didn't know you all then. Um, but, but you'd have been welcome. Would have loved, loved to have you. And what struck me the most as I was reading this passage this week, thinking back on my own wedding, is that when we started to sing in this building, in this room, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. The people of God who had gathered in this room to witness our wedding were worshiping our Lord first and foremost. Now this room, this sanctuary was full and with, with the loudest and most beautiful harmony, although y'all are giving it a run for money back then, 
It was full of God's church. Now, we weren't from all the same church, but it was full of God's church, worshiping. There were things that made us different. There, the folks there didn't all know each other necessarily, but what unified them was not their acquaintance with myself or with my wife, although that was the reason for making the trip to Orange, but their reason for being unified together was the fact that those people were the people of God gathered together in worship. It's kind of a vision of heavenly worship, kind of like today. Hasn't this been glorious? We aren't all the same. We, though we do have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, we all confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather around this throne room singing together as one, giving God the praise he deserves. That unity together in worship, that helps me now to envision that heavenly throne room that John is talking about in the book of Revelation. That vision of the church unseen. So thanks be to God for our Baptist, for our Anabaptist, Mennonite, Amish friends, and beyond. And thanks be to God for this music that unites us together in worship around our common faith in Christ. May we never be too short-sighted to experience heavenly worship when it breaks up. And may we never be too narrow-sighted to see each other as brothers and sisters in the church of God. Let us pray together. God, we give you thanks for this vision of heavenly worship right here in our own sanctuary. We give you thanks for our friends who have gathered from around this state and beyond to worship you in the spirit of Christian unity. God, we ask that you would continue to be with this choir as they travel, as they take your gospel message to Harrisonburg. God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship together. We thank you for the churches that are represented in this room. And Lord, for this congregation. And Lord, as we've been blessed, we seek to be a blessing to others. So would you bless the offering that we're about to take. May it be used to further your kingdom. This kingdom that we're all on a rowboat together in the church of God. So that we might spread your good news to all. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Choir, thank you again for being with us. Thank you, friends of the choir, for joining us together in worship today. What again, a beautiful vision of worship this is. What heavenly worship we've been a part of today. So now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Yeah. <laughs>